Wait. wait, wait. I brought a prop. You did? I mean, it's always in my bag, but sorry. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. help me, girl. Okay. Hello, and welcome to What the Fluff. I am Lady Fluffy, your panda. I'm Tamla D. Today we are filming in Fluff's car, not Tam's car. That's why I'm behind the wheel. Um, you're not seeing things. I can't drive. <laughs> I promise. What are we talking about today? What have you got planned for today? Give us a headline. Unsolved murders that pertain to South Africa. So unsolved South African murders? Yes. Okay. Because as interesting as it is to do well-known unsolved murders. Murders. Mortars across borders. <laughs> as fun as it is to focus on like famous unsolved mysteries mm. and things like that, I think South Africa has a couple of its own dark, dirty secrets, as we know. <laughs> My headlines for today is a Twitter feud, an it Twitter feud. So, Tam. Hit me with your best shots. Well, the first thing I wanted to comment on is it might not be that <laughs> interesting, but it's a part of my everyday life and it has mm. been for like the past six months, possibly even going on a year. And that is freaking construction. Yes. All over the place. Mm -hmm. And I've mentioned it before that they've been renovations in my block of flats like it started with the flat underneath mine mm -hmm. and then it was the flat across from that one and now the flat right across from me is now having renovations on the same done. floor oh on the same Lord. floor so there's just banging and crashing and all the time and not that long ago all the back stair fire escapes those were recently painted so the smell of paint is everywhere yes, I noticed that. and then on top of that you've got octotel laying down fiber lines everywhere which is great which is yeah. fine i'm excited for fiber Yay. i really really am because i would love to stream bob's burgers while the boyfriend is playing PUBG. So now Octotel is now putting down lines and obviously to compact the earth, to mm. put tar back over it, they have to use a jackhammer. So we have like bits of sidewalk that have been cut up and mm. like, and there's just construction everywhere all the time. And it's not even just in my area. Like we went to Canal Walk on the weekend and there's just roadworks all the time all over the place. I bet you if we have any viewers who live in the Fishhook area, the Fishhook Bay area, and have had to deal with the main road being redone for the past like 20 years, they're probably just looking at you going, really bitch? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I used to live down that end of the world and the uh, Musenberg road there that goes mm. past like St. James, I mean, they started working on that probably when I was in middle school and it only finished like what maybe a year ago so it really has been 20 years that's okay. fine I get it we're improving the infrastructure and all that stuff but there's always strange people <laughs> in my block of flats every time I walk out my front door I was going to be like hi random stranger Please. how are you today tell me you're supposed to be here <laughs> like, my first story has to do with it drama Ooh. yes you probably already know this because you're on the twitters way more than i am mm -hmm. i had to find this out through buzzfeed that's how little i go on twitter <laughs> but basically this feud this feud celebrity feud i'm doing this all over the place because celebrity feuds are stupid but i'm absolutely in love with it is that it's between the cat the kid actors from it and Jane <laughs> Charles, the popular makeup YouTuber. Right off the bat, I'm having a very hard time believing that this is actually serious. <laughs> it actually got a little bit serious in the sense that James Charles, during it, he started tweeting during the movie. Disrespectful. Yes. So he was like, okay, five minutes in and it is already awful. Stay tuned for updates. Hang on. I pay money to watch a movie that I've been waiting for for over two years mm -hmm. and you're gonna pull out your stupid phone and start tweeting bitch 
hell no! Just, so he deleted the original tweets but felt obliged to explain why he hated the movie so much. So basically people ripped him to pieces. They attacked him on Twitter. And he's just like, why am I being attacked for saying I didn't like a movie? Y'all need to find something better to do with your lives. I didn't like it because it seemed as though it was branded to be a horror movie. I was not scared. I did not enjoy it. Get over it. Fine. Finn Wolfhard, one of the actors from it, decided to call James out, which is why he was texting and tweeting during a movie. Exactly. So James tried to be cool about it. He tweeted saying, I just got dragged by a legendary child actor. I'm kind of honored. You should be. <laughs> <laughs> that kid's amazing. Have you seen him? <sighs> He's got more talent in his little finger than I've had my entire life. Carry on. <laughs> so James continued with saying, you know, it was a fantastically made movie. I went into it expecting it to be more horror was disappointed when I wasn't scared. He was like, that's amazing. I feel the opposite, but the amazing thing about opinions is that we all have our own. You're allowed to have your own opinion. Just don't have it in the middle of a movie while you're taking out your phone he while I'm trying to watch. <laughs> it gets better. Oh no. So he even recorded an, a video at the back of an Uber, like trying to get people oh, to stop okay. attacking him. I was like <laughs> about like this whole it thing, but people were still coming for him using his phone in the theater. So he clapped back and he was just like, can people please shut up about using your phone during a movie? There are more important things to worry about. Like, I don't know, the world ending. Yes, my world would end. You ruined my fucking movie with the goddamn phone. Everything settled after that. The dust was settling. Everything was fine. Mm. And for those of you who don't know, James does makeup tutorials mm. on his YouTube page. He does stunning makeup. He He's does. so talented. He it's really does. It's fucking art. Like, it's so beautiful. And he posted how to get the Pennywise clown signature look mm. after all of this drama. It's the most popular movie right now, so I don't blame him for picking up the trend. He admitted don't people will say him. it's hypocritical and ironic of him to do this video after all the initial it drama, but his viewers requested it he just didn't like the movie he's entitled to his opinion so if he did the tutorial that's not like how dare you well a day after james's video was uploaded actor wyatt olive who mm -hmm. plays stanley in the movie mm -hmm. seemed to subtweet the youtuber and said when you decide to exploit a movie that you hate for money and attention because why not didn't tag james in it or anything that was just his tweet Oh, he's sassy. And then, <laughs> oh, I like sassy. it. Sassy. Then he tweeted right after, it's not that I'm trying to be mean or roast anyone here. I get it. It's just business. Not a big deal. Just how the internet works. Fans started to pile on, but it wasn't until Shane Dawson oh, replied to Wyatt's tweet with James's handle, jokingly asking that the makeup artist not make another apology video. So Shane Dawson was just like, at fellow Wyatt, at James Charles, James, do not make another Uber apology video. I do not deserve this many good things <laughs> all caps all in Shane's style like if you watch Shane Dawson you know that this man was just joking like this is his humor so James was just like I'm not apologizing for doing a tutorial my followers asked for I promise sister so Wyatt replied saying I get that and it's totally fine just making a joke here on my end but James was not having any of this claiming that not only did he already apologize but that Wyatt knew by tweeting it it would result in fans dragging him again and then why try to apply uh, apologize saying sorry about that lol i can't control people but i try to make sure that you know they're more chilled about it he then sent out this tweet trying to get his fans to stand down so then james told replied with thank you sister white corrected him and went brother asterisk asterisk but okay Okay. So then James ended it all with, we're all sisters down here. Oh! <laughs> oh! my god! Done. 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 So that's the it drama. <laughs> Done. Oh my god! That's amazing. So that was all the it drama. Basically... Woo! One YouTuber was just like, I don't like this movie. And suddenly the internet was like, you're a bad person. Now, as I said, I waited for this movie for ages. When I heard that it was going into production, I initially was a bit like, eh, we have the miniseries. Why do you need to fuck with what's perfect? Although it wasn't. The first half was perfect. The second half of the adults was, eh, it's okay. So I waited for this movie for a long time. 
and then eventually went to go see it in Cinema Prestige with a couple of my friends. Now, anybody who's been to Cinema Prestige knows that it's fucking expensive, okay? Not that good, <laughs> to be honest. I had a better time at My Little Pony stuffing our face with cookies that we made than, you know, being in Cinema Prestige. So we're sitting there, we have these really comfy seats, whatever, that I could like fall asleep in. You pay like 175 Rand, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a movie. And then, what happens? What happens? 10 minutes before the film ends, cuts out. It goes blank. There's no sound, no picture, nothing. Just cuts out. Excuse you? Cuts out. There's nothing. And then before the movie had even started, when they were playing previews, we were just getting sound, no picture. So previews were playing for movies that were coming on at different times or whatever. No picture, just sound. It's they a podcast. They fixed that before it started. <laughs> but then the movie is not even like there's like 10 minutes to go before the end of the film which you know the endings are kind of crucial because this movie is coming out in two parts yeah so the ending's a little bit of a big deal cuts out that's it i'm like are, are you kidding me i pay Excuse 175 me? rand for you to end my movie before it's done for you to end prematurely no this is not how this works so, needless to say, I threw a bit of a hissy fit, and uh, we got to see the end of the movie because they fixed the damn problem. Yay! So, may seem like a bit of a diva thing to do, but... But you have to! The squeakiest hinges get the most oil, so if you make noise, you get attention. No, let's stick to the plan. Let's not talk about Harvey Weinstein and hashtag me too. Because that was a day of, of self-reflection and... I am amazed at how many really big Hollywood players have been affected by stuff like that. Like this morning I heard like Reese Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Who is touching my Reese? <laughs> With a spoon! <laughs> no. Sorry guys, I, I make terrible jokes when I'm awkward or when I'm trying to process things in my head. Yesterday, or was it the day before, Alanis, no not Alanis Morissette, I always want to call her Alanis Morissette, but that's not who it is, it was the chick from Charmed, who was also oh, in Rose Who's McGowan. the Boss, who was also in Oh, uh, the uh -huh. Alyssa Milano, not Alanis Morissette, Alyssa Milano, she basically asked everyone to post hashtag me too, um, if you've ever been harassed or assaulted or anything and her thing was like women and a lot of people changed it to people because they were like men get sexually harassed and assaulted too you know and it was just my entire feed was just filled with hashtag me too hashtag me too like the entire day and I just like I know that it happens I know I'm fully aware I've been there I've seen it happen to my friends my friends have seen it happen to me like it's happened to us at the same time <laughs> but it was just seeing all these me too's just kind of reaffirmed so many fears and it just made me think about all the cases that it's happened with guys that I have trusted and have been dating and with guys that I just didn't know and it honestly made me go WTF and then everyone's like yeah it's going to be really hard to find a woman who can't say hashtag me too which just I mean, that's, broke my heart even more. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's the point of this. Yeah. There are women who won't go hashtag me too because as our friend Pixie said, she posted on Facebook and she was just like, survivors don't owe you their story. Exactly. Yeah. You're not just another story of like, you know, to throw in people's faces to be like, see, here, like these are actually yeah. people. They're not just, you yeah. know numbers and statistics and being like oh well it happened to this one girl like this one girl is you know a person and is dealing with it and living her life yeah so and there's a lot of walls and things that you have to build up just so that you can process the next day you know yeah just to live and keep going because... must you right now Yesterday, that all of that just made me go WTF because it's, and as I, I keep saying, guys, it's 2017. We shouldn't be living like this anymore. I think, in a way, it's 
it's a positive thing that people are coming forward and speaking out about it but like Philip DeFranco said was it's great that people are doing this but a lot of people are coming out but they're not naming anyone yeah you specifically know? in Hollywood in Hollywood they're coming out and saying this was done this was done this was mm -hmm. done but they're not naming anyone name and shame and like he said that you might you know symbolically kick out a Weinstein but that doesn't mean that the problem is going to be solved so you can have as many people come forward as you want mm -hmm. if there's no actual change mm -hmm then you're just opening up wounds for what social media hype likes hashtags retweets like if there's not going to be any real change then not what's the point but there's no point in putting people through that trauma all over again like i agree i agree that if you're not going to name all the other producers and all the other people that have like done these things to you Sorry. then you know for that specific cause of of it being in Hollywood and people like kind of normalizing it by saying mm. oh that's just Harvey Weinstein that's just him or like he'll just open secret. he'll just come into your room and like masturbate in front of you or ask you for like a naked massage like that's that's fine you know so many people have normalized it and I don't understand the point of bringing up a case and then not naming names specifically if you're trying to create this revolution in within Hollywood within the industry where women are treated with respect but at the same time I do also think that so many women coming out with their stories is giving girls a realistic heads up so that mm. when it happens to them they're not suddenly caught being like oh like I should do this I feel trapped like with the Jennifer Lawrence thing where she was like in a naked lineup and she oh, was like, just like she went with it because she that? didn't know what the hell like hopefully all of these stories and everything coming to light all of those young girls who are now going into Hollywood and aspiring they'll be in those situations and they're gonna be like ah fuck you no because like I said I was like how dare you do that to Reese Witherspoon because you think, oh, uh, you know, like it, it wouldn't happen to, you know, it hasn't happened to Jennifer Lawrence. I mean, she's mm. like the biggest actress right now in the world right now. You know, it wouldn't happen to Kate Beckinsale. And, you know, all these like massive, well-established actresses. And you find out that no one no is one immune. Is. Yep. Absolutely no one. I mean, even the men who've come forward. Mm. And you'd think like, wow, okay. Because obviously Hollywood comes across as being very misogynistic and you'd be like wow even men as well and I mean other people have spoken about it from um, like with child stars I think what was his name it's like in the 80s or something there was like Corey the two Corys or something mm. um, one of them was in Stand By Me but he was speaking about like the child abuse well, insert a picture that here <laughs> <laughs> that happens as well and like the child yeah. abuse that he went through being sexually abused and recently a case came out of the director of Jeepers Creepers how uh, he was like convicted pedophile and then it was just kind of like brushed under the rug of Hollywood and he got to do Jeepers Creepers which is a relatively successful horror franchise and there's a new one out well fuck like <laughs> yeah it's really good that all these stories are coming out like I always think like you just said it's really good that people going into this industry they won't be taken by surprise they'll be like no this is not okay yeah people can't do that to you like standing in a naked lineup that's not okay on the other side like pixie said that you know survivors don't owe you their stories and it's like if there's gonna be no real change from this then like people yeah. coming out and opening those wounds again like what what is the point like we kick out harvey weinstein but then what about like roman polanski casey and, affleck you know casey affleck and all those people like <laughs> yeah so it's a really like mm. it's a highly debatable and because the case is still going on and people coming forward and people actually having conversations with each other and I think this whole thing is going to bring about more social change mm. the past couple of years we've seen a lot of social change we've seen people's dialogues the way they interact with each other it's all starting to change on the other end of that you get people who are more stubborn and will be more offensive 
just to kind of I, I don't even understand why they do it I don't even understand why you can't just respect someone who asks you to use a pronoun that you're not used to for example it literally has nothing to do with you at the same point I don't understand people who get offended when you ask them not to touch you because you're uncomfortable with touch it has nothing to do with you if anything treat others as you want to be treated if you want to be treated with respect treat others with respect I mean you don't have to go out of your way to be nice to people but you know just holding a door open for someone just be kind really you know it's not if hard. you have something snarky to say maybe don't say it it's really not that difficult yeah because <laughs> we're all what um we're all in the same game just different d different levels dealing with the same hell just different devils so and that is our quote for today here on what the flop